What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, be sure to click the subscribe button and click the like button as well. Today I am here with an airman in the United States Air Force. This is Jacob Disher. Go ahead and tell me a little bit about how long you've been in the Air Force and what rank you are. A little over three and a half years now and I am currently a senior airman. Today's video we are going to be talking about joining with an open contract because that's what Jacob did back in 2015 and I figured he would have some insight for you guys if you're trying to figure out if you should join with an open contract or if you're already going in with an open contract what to have in mind. Now first I do want to start off with saying that a majority of the time your recruiters are going to get more open contracts than specific contracts. This is actually something I need to make a video on for you guys because I have it on my channel to explain the whole job selection process with recruiting but you are more likely going to get an open contract so just keep that in mind that when you go to a recruiter do not have the dead set idea that you're going to get this exact job and if you don't get that you're not going to join. So before we get into why you signed a open <laughs> contract, <laughs> no you're good. I was thinking about that girl's hair last. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> so before we jump into why you signed an open contract, I think it's important to know why you joined the Air Force in general. Not just a specific job, but why did you join the Air Force? It was mainly because of family tradition. My grandfather was in the army and he did a lot of good things and also my dad was in the army as well so I just wanted to follow in both their footsteps and make my grandfather and dad proud. So when you were joining the Air Force you didn't have a select like this is exactly what I want to do. It wasn't like I want to do this for the military as more so I just want to do this stuff because my family's done it. I looked into a couple jobs. Starting out, I just wanted to, I knew I wanted to be in the military. Regardless yeah, of the job. Regardless. You said you went to basic training in 2015. Did you start with the recruiter in depth process at that time too? Yeah, it was early 2015. And then when did you leave for basic? August 11th. So you were in depth for what, like five months-ish? Yeah. For some people that might seem like forever, I'm sure you saw people come in and leave within two months, mm -hmm. but then there were other people that you were leaving and they're like, I've been here for nine months. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep in mind with the recruiting process of joining, you're not always going to get in and get out right away. Sometimes it'll take longer. For me, it actually took 11 months between when I went to MEPS versus shipping out. So you were about a half a year, so mm -hmm. about half the amount of time that I was in depth. But that'll vary greatly depending on who you are, or what jobs are available at the time, and what you're trying to go for. So you were in depth for how long when you finally got your contract? Um, <laughs> it's hard to think back four years. Yeah. How long Maybe from like, when you signed your contract till you left? Four months. So you were in for depth for about two months before you got your contract. Yeah. And then you signed that, and then you had to wait another four months to leave. Yeah. So why did you sign an open contract when your recruiter gave that to you? Did you know what an open contract was when you were joining? He called me and he said, hey, I got a job for you. I'm like, cool, what is it? He's like, it's an open contract. I'm like, all right. So had you researched any of the open general jobs before that? Or were you just like, cool, a contract, I'll take a contract? That's pretty much how it was. I didn't really know anything much about open, electrical, mechanical, other than the ASVAB test. Gotcha. So you were just like, whatever, I'll take, I'll take whatever I can get. So yeah. he gave you a contract and you're like, all right, let's do this. So I know one of the biggest questions that people are going to have is how does the process of accepting an open contract work from going to basic training? Because you don't have a said job when you're leaving for basic training. So how does that process work once you get to basic? I think it was about third week. They pulled us into, we all had to march to this, I don't remember the name of the building, but they split us up into different classes. People that had like an open contract would go to here. So I went there and they gave us this piece of paper with a little booklet of what open contract you were, either general or whatever. And you had to like select, I think it was like five or ten jobs from that little booklet that you want in order of what you want. You had filled out your dream sheet for jobs you wanted with your recruiter and you couldn't get one of those, but he got you an open contract. So mm -hmm. then you went to basic and you got to fill out a whole secondary dream sheet but it was only for general job how long after you filled that out did you find out what your job actually was six weeks it was close to graduation okay so right before graduation you're finding out like this is your so the whole time you're in basic you're like i don't even know what i'm gonna do in the military yeah, i'm just here <laughs> so you got material management which is the afsc 2s 0 x1 that was one of the five that you had selected yep it was, what in rank was it? Number two. What was your number one? Security forces. Security forces, and you didn't get security forces. No. Nope. So a lot of people might think, you, you know, like you get in with security forces because it's like one of the highest demanded jobs. But 
That's not necessarily true that you're always going to get it if you want it because you were going, your number one was one of the highest demanded jobs everyone, and you still didn't get it. So yeah, everyone was saying, oh, I'm going to get security forces yeah. and, I, and it blew my mind that I didn't get it. So you got material management, which yep. is totally different than security yeah, forces. completely different. Yeah, way different. But you still got one of your top picks. Mm -hmm. So even accepting an open contract, it wasn't like you were totally screwed mm -hmm. with your job selection because you still got something that was like in your top picks. Yeah. What were you originally trying to go for before you accepted the open contract? Aerial gunner. Aerial gunner? Okay. Yeah. Were you trying to do like Loadmaster or yeah. anything else? Yeah, same here. I'm colorblind, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> they just didn't get, end up getting you the contract. And so that's why I said in the beginning, with the open contract, you're more likely to get an open contract because I'll make a video more in depth of the selection process, but about 60% of the jobs that your recruiter is gonna be given are open contracts, and those jobs have to be filled. So 40% of the jobs that get kicked out to recruiters are select jobs and 60% are just general, like open jobs for open mechanical, open general. So you're not necessarily going to get your go-to job right off the bat. You have a better chance of taking the open contract, going to basic training and hoping you pick one of your top three or five and you get one of those. Trying to get aerial gunner or load master, there might be each month maybe one of those kicked out to the recruiters, like for a select job. And for your recruiter to snag that one open spot when it's a regional thing, again, I'll make a video. Like it's a whole in-depth thing. I talked to a recruiter about the whole process. You had a better chance of getting security forces. Well, possibly security forces because it's one of the higher demanded jobs. So it is actually kind of crazy that you didn't yeah, get it. I'm, they must have had too many people already signed up for it at that point. Day, so. I still don't know how I didn't. <laughs> so with that being said, you took this job as an open contract, you went and filled out your dream sheet, you got your number two pick two weeks before you were going to tech school. Mm -hmm. So you're, you've been in the Air Force for six weeks now and all of a sudden you find out this is what you're gonna do in the Air Force. Were you excited when you found out? I was a little bit. I did a little bit of research on it before I shipped off to basic. Because you can't really do much when you're at basic, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I knew a little bit about it. I knew how long the tech school was and I knew where it was. So I didn't go in blinded yeah. like, about that job. Do a little bit of research about if you sign an open contract, do some research mm -hmm. to know what jobs are available that you want to put in your top five or 10 or whatever, however many they allow you to. So you know what you're going to be getting into when you are selecting those jobs versus just accepting the open contract and then just going and winging it. Then when you get there, they're going to have like a general description I think don't they yeah. in the booklet yep. but it's like very general like it, it's not the peace of mind where you can actually like google it yourself and get the information you're looking for so definitely do your research beforehand so you know at least what you're putting down on your list so to wrap this video up what advice would you have for somebody that's signing an open contract not just general contract but just an open contract definitely do research on jobs that's probably the number one thing you don't want to go into basic blinded and just not know what jobs are what and you actually want to do research on the jobs that you are going to pick on on your list do you have anything else how to maybe calm someone down from taking an open contract because i know some people look at open contracts as a very negative thing and i'm sure you've probably heard since you've been mm -hmm. in like everybody tries to get a select job before they go but mm -hmm. a majority of the people are getting open contracts and so there's this like bad light on it so maybe to like ease somebody's mind that signed an open contract or just got kicked an open contract and they're like, I don't know what to do. Don't, don't listen to any rumors because when I went in and I told everyone that I was going open general, they're like, oh, you're going to get services and it didn't happen, obviously. Definitely. Not that it can't happen, yeah. but the selection process is still to try to help you a little bit. Not entirely like other branches. A lot of people, I think, compare it to the Marines or Army or Navy mm -hmm. where they're like, oh, you want this said job? All right, cool. Let's go. They're just handing out whatever jobs you want because they want people in the Air Force is a little bit more selective. Definitely have an open mind towards what contracts they're going to be handing you because it's not always the doom and gloom that people make it seem. Um, so overall, with you signing an open contract, you've been in for almost four years now. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you wish you could go back and like redo it all? Has it been like that bad of an experience or you, have you been like happy with your experience so far? I've been happy with it. That's another, you got to stay positive no matter what. I mean, if you don't get the job you want, you're still going to make a lot of friends. You're still going to have fun with your job. And I, I wouldn't go back because I've met so many great people throughout my whole process in the military. And it's been great.
So just keep an open mind if you're signing an open contract, it's not as terrible as people want to make it seem. Also, Jacob turned down orders to Okinawa, Japan. So everybody's going to be like, what are you doing? So he actually is here at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia, and he had traded somebody in tech school mm -hmm. for this spot. Yep. So, because he, he didn't want to go overseas. And I'm like, dude, I because I was at I was like, that was the coolest experience ever. I highly encourage, like, that's what the one thing we were saying with, like, keep an open mind mm -hmm. is just take take the opportunities that you're given. Like, I know a lot of us will be like, well, I want this, this, and this. But sometimes, like, if you just let like keep a positive mindset and just let things happen the way that that they fall um, sometimes that'll be some of the best experiences you'll ever have so even coming to Moody I don't think Moody was probably like a, mm -hmm. you were just like okay I don't want to go overseas so you're like who wants yeah. to trade me right so it wasn't like you were like oh, I'm trying to go to Moody mm -hmm. it was just that's what somebody was like I'm willing to give this up for that yeah. so which you can actually trade in tech school if people are willing to trade. I've also seen times where they don't allow people to trade. So it's hit or miss with that as well. You would have wished to be closer to home, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That's, we've already talked about that off camera. He, he's from Ohio originally, but I mean, Moody, Georgia, you said 13 hour drive. Yeah. So even that you're like, you've still been happy with your experience. So yeah. it hasn't been like the worst thing ever. So, mm -hmm. well, I appreciate you hopping on here and talking and hopefully this helped you guys understand open contracts a little bit more. Mm -hmm.